off the Craft Beer Podcast with Gabe and Steven. My name is Steven Humes here with Gabriel Apria. How we doing, jabronis? It's November. It's the middle of November. Fall is a kicking in full swing, and we are doing something we haven't done in a while. Two breweries, two different breweries, each getting their due. Gabe is in Colorado, and I am in the great state of New York. Yes, indeedy dandy. We are switching things up, knocking out as many breweries as we can. Uh, I will be sampling a fun beer from Great Divide, great brewery out of Denver, Colorado. Lots of history and initiatives behind them. Very excited to get into it. And I am visiting Equilibrium Brewery. Equilibrium Brewery, a dope brewery out of the upstate New York area. Been on my radar for uh, quite some time, and they have uh, some sexy social media. I'll just say it. Uh, so I'm excited to kind of do this uh, this two parter. We're crisscrossing the country. I'm going east. Gabe's going west. And Great Divide has previously been on our show, if that sounds familiar to you. It was round 44. They were one of our original pumpkin breweries. I had their pumpkin spice. Yeah, Yeti. If, you, if you see the big Yeti looking guy, that's that's where is it? He's right. He's he's right there. If you're on YouTube, Gabe's at the Great Divide, one of their many tap rooms. But yeah, we decided to uh, switch it up have a pair of breweries and we're drinking some beers that make us feel, you know, it's getting cold outside. So we thought, fuck that. Let's, let's bring back the summer. We're drinking some, some su- fun beers that if you're into uh fruity ales or sour ales, you know, this one's going to be for you. We are, we're feeling the summer spirit and I live in LA and so I can drink that shit all year round. So, um, and I can't because it's cold, but that's but, okay. Uh, but today we're gonna pretend. Yay. So if you haven't engaged with us before, thank you for joining us. Welcome in. Uh, there's a treasure trove of hours and hours of podcast content for you that we've put out over the years. You can engage with the hop on social media. We are at the HO Podcast. You can follow our personals if you are interested. Gabe is at Gaberade67. I am at Shakes Beerist. And that's both on Instagram and on X. You can find us on Facebook. Uh, you can find us on YouTube. We are a video podcast, as I mentioned. Just search for the Hop of Craft Beer Podcast. When you find us, subscribe, click that bell. You will get notified whenever an episode goes live. And please tell your friends, tell your family about the podcast. It's really the most important way that our listeners can engage with us, and we really appreciate it. Uh, leave a rate and review on your podcast platform of choice and tell your people about the Hop because that helps grow the Hop community. We appreciate it. Finally, if you have suggestions or requests for the show, breweries that you want to see featured on the show, beer styles that you want to see featured on the show, what have you, you can engage with us by email. If you'd like to email us, thehopod at gmail.com. Let us know what breweries to hit up next. Let us know what breweries to repeat. Let us know who is ready for some motherfucking turkey. Buddy. Turkey Day is right around the corner, which means friends, family, football, food, and tomfuckery, if you will. Um, we're very looking, very much looking forward to it, very excited for it. But, uh, you know, as always, we're going to we're gonna celebrate in our own style. Hopefully you'll have a beer in your hand. Um, but if not, and you want to join us for this episode, please do so. We're here for you guys. Let's get into the news. Beer news. Right, a uh, quick housekeeping note here. Uh, we are recording a bit earlier than we normally do, uh, given what Gabe was just talking about. There's some holidays coming up, and with that comes some travel, some things of that nature. So, uh, beer news may be a bit light over the next couple of episodes due to our uh, premature recording but uh anything that we missed will be covered Due to our very busy lives we're very Did, popular people we are we're just you know we're jet setting and uh can't take the mics with us everywhere but we'll get we'll get to it. anything we miss that uh is major you know if 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 maui brewing is is sold oh, again god we'll be on top of it uh if maui when brewing decides we get back. to you know change their beer cans <laughs> or some shit always in the news uh, beer wise, the, the trend of the moment is definitely, um, 
you know, we're seeing a lot of reports and and uh, this is the time of year when uh, industry sort of business trend reports come out and we see a lot of just trends of just like declining sales. Um, this isn't too much of a surprise. The economy sucks. We all know this. Uh, it's winter. People spend less on beer. People are spending less at beer tap rooms. Um, this isn't uh, much of a surprise, but I will say that beer sellers are being a bit more conservative with their projections given the state of the world. So... Um, I feel like if it's it's harder to go to a brewery sometimes when it's colder out because you know the brewery vibe is like outside tables you know you're you you don't need to be like all curled up in a little ball and you know when it gets cold out that's sometimes tough to do it definitely uh it definitely shifts this time of year Gabe and I have drank beers in an igloo so and that was um I I mean. I, I hated it in the moment, although I'm not sure I would trade the experience for anything. So Yeah, I got to be honest. It was a <laughs> lot of fun. We had a little heater out there that we were hugging. It was, yeah, hey, I had fun. It, it was, yeah, it was definitely fun in like, a, um, hey, this is really cold and I, I'm. Why are we doing this? I don't, why the fuck are we doing this kind of way? Uh, but yeah, so it, all this to say, if you can get yourself to a brewery or if you can uh, buy beer, you should do it because um, the beer world needs you people. Help the environment by buying beer. Yes. And recycling for the love of all that is holy. Uh, in case you missed it, Treehouse Brewing has announced they're going to open a tap room in Saratoga Springs. This is, yay, this is fun. Yeah. Uh, they, I, th I feel like we mentioned this, or maybe we were just talking about some other ideas that they had. They kind of opened tap rooms all over the uh, Massachusetts yeah. and now New York area. But several weeks ago, the company did take to social media. They announced their plans to quote, look beyond the golf course to the racetrack. They have purchased property and they are looking to open it in 2024. So it's moving quickly. The company said, uh, quote, now in our 12th year, your patronage and trust have enabled us to pursue a dream we never thought possible. Many of you have traveled to us from this region for years, supporting by us, uh, supporting us by standing in the cold, awaiting the day's allotments from the canning line. We are so grateful that you put your faith in us and have entrusted us with this opportunity, and we are excited to return the favor. So this is cool. Treehouse, uh, if you are not familiar, awesome, awesome brewery, again, out of uh, Massachusetts, one of the OG beer, uh, like IPA houses, you know. Yeah. Um, one of those you wait in line for for hours outside or you you know get the day's can list and they sell out immediately was on our show once uh many moons you. ago yeah i'll tell you the time. number if i can find it um but we it's, had their king julius i think it sounds about right it was round yeah. 107 so if you want to check that out we had their king julius and their bear with a hint mm. of coffee Ooh, yeah, I remember so, that being really good. The location they're opening is expected to provide about 60 jobs. It will brew a beer whose proceeds will benefit Sustainable Saratoga, which is a local nonprofit that uses uh, education, advocacy, and action to advance sustainable practices and works to protect the environment for current and future generations and the Saratoga Springs Performing Arts Center. So, uh... It's going to be awesome. And if you are uh, from Saratoga Springs or you're, uh, you know, you, you summer there or whatnot, now you'll be able to get Treehouse straight from the source. Straight from the tap. Straight, on the tree. Just, that's straight from straight from the sap. Yeah, uh, that's that's I don't even that's let's give you it. Yay! Yay! You didn't hey. even need to give me that. That sucked. <laughs> and I know it. But no, Treehouse is awesome. We love them. Um, we hope they open a tap room in every state across the country um, because that would make our lives a hell of a lot easier. Amen. Joel Pippman, not to be confused with Scotty Pippen, uh, has been hired as the new VP of operations for Sapporo and Stone. Joel. You Joel. stay classy, San Diego. I don't know nice. why I played that one, but he hasn't been here in a while, so. Well, Stone's in San Diego, and we forgot to do it when we did the San Diego Brewery, so. That's right. Yeah. Okay, so it all connects. Yeah. Uh, this is definitely a step forward as we've been talking about the continued expansion for both Sapporo, uh, 
the Japanese beer brand, and Stone, uh, as Steven mentioned, out of San Diego, their partnership last year. Pipman is a former ABI executive that brings 19 years of experience in the areas of brewing, packaging, quality assurance, utilities, business administration, engineering, so on and so forth. He's going to be based in Richmond, Virginia. He's going to oversee the company's bi-coastal operations. This is a very big deal. We love to see uh, people thriving in the beer game, especially beer veterans, because as we've come to learn, not anyone can really do this. It takes a strong hand and a strong mind and uh, an interest, nonetheless, for this kind of stuff. So, Joel, thanks, bro. We're looking forward to it. Uh, yeah. Sapporo and Stone, our brews, are currently undergoing major expansions at the company. Uh, they're trying to brew all the Sapporo beers for, uh, in addition to the Stone uh, offerings. Yeah, Stone is uh, kind of growing rapidly since Sapporo purchased them. Sapporo purchased them last year, as you mentioned. Um, so this is just, you know, another step in that direction. Uh, always hoping that Stone stays as crafty as possible, even as these uh, ABI executives and Sapporo and everybody uh, scoops up the brand. But so far, I've still been drinking Stone. Uh, we doing okay. I will say I that. would so far. I, I, I think the window is now open for like a, you know, our last episode, we had a, a rice Japanese yuzu lager rice lager. I mean, now can there be a stone Japanese, Japanese lager sort of shenanigans? I think that'd be dope. Maybe they roll out a bunch of different IPAs all the time. And I just see them a lot because I'm in la and um like some of them are downright scary i mean they roll out these like stone triple ipas that come in six packs and you're like it's only like 10.99 like that's a really good price but i don't that's i'm scared johnny Do i'm it. frightened <laughs> johnny i'm frightened All step right. up to the plate and do it america I, needs it i am proposing a toast and let's ju- you know what it's uh-oh okay it's, yeah let's keep it classic you know um it's I, I I've talked about it on the show before. Thanksgiving is my favorite holiday, and look, oftentimes we Thanksgiving happens on Thursday. We drop episodes on Thursday. Often we get to talk to you on Thanksgiving. That's not the case this year. It's an off week for us. So this is my only opportunity to wish you, the listener, a happy Thanksgiving, and I'm going to do that with a poem. Happy Turkey Day. Twas the night of Thanksgiving, but I just couldn't sleep. Tried counting backwards. Tried counting sheep. The leftovers beckoned, the dark meat and white, but I fought the temptation with all of my might. Tossing and turning with anticipation, the thought of a snack became infatuation. So to the kitchen I raced, flung open the door, and gazed at the fridge full of goodies galore. I gobbled up turkey and buttered potatoes, pickles and carrots, beans and tomatoes. I felt myself swelling so plump and so round, till all of a sudden I rose off the ground. I crashed through the ceiling, floating to the sky, with a mouthful of pudding and a handful of pie. But I managed to yell as I soared past the trees, happy eating to all. Pass the cranberries, please. I only bet big money. I bet you a dollar you've done that toast before. Really? That would be very upsetting if I had (laughs) No, it's a, it's a callback to a classic because it is really awesome. It is a great toast. Have I, I don't actually know. done that exact toast before? Because I'll be really upset. I'm going to go check the tape. It sounds familiar. That's all I I'm going to say. That's... Maybe you did another version of one. <laughs> oh, I've definitely done something similar before. If I've done that before. I don't remember. <laughs> I, I don't remember you... Uh, uh, floating off the ground after eating too yeah, much. Yeah, it conjured that lady in Harry Potter to me, you know, that she like blows yes. through the ceiling. That, that, yeah, and I yeah. I don't think I've done it before. I don't know. Look, Thanksgiving's my favorite holiday. People don't understand this, and I just don't, and I don't understand why why this is so hard to get through people's thick skulls. I don't have to, there's no pressure. It's just, yeah. it's, it's eat food, drink beer, watch Broadway shows in the morning, watch football all day. Do the and I do the cooking. So I, I say there's no pressure. And it's somebody out there was like, "Well, you're not the one doing the cook." Yes, I am. But like I do most of it. But I love cooking, so it's the best day. I don't. I don't understand what it doesn't come t- with a month of yeah. fucking 
sales and shopping and eh. wow black friday but that's after that's after i look i love christmas i'm not trying to be a scrooge but i'm just saying thanksgiving we get to have the meal without the the pressure that's without, it without without uncle carl showing up and ruining everything well he well might, maybe so. <laughs> i wouldn't i'm not a cooker i would consider myself an assistant in the kitchen when it mm, comes to thanksgiving fair. i help I don't just sit on my ass. I help until someone's like, get, get out of the kitchen. I'm like, you got it. And then I go grab a beer and I put them. I'm like, what's the score? That's I. Yeah, it's my it's my happy place. I don't know. I love being in the kitchen because because then the socializing comes to you. Somebody comes to you. You can talk to them for a bit. They go away. You get to just stay in your island and you know and the football you, you keep this the game close enough like you can watch the score while you cook but you don't have to make rounds you know you just people come to you and and then you swat their hands away you're like stop don't eat that and if yet. you want a conversation and you're like i gotta check the i gotta check the green beans so yeah if you don't want to talk to aunt kathy helen yeah and hell i like helen helen's better anyway all right. Anyway, we're going to we're going to. So all that to say, happy Thanksgiving, people. And uh, we're going to drink some beer about it. All right, so we are breaking up per brewery, and Stephen is kicking things off in New York. Yep, so we're starting it off in New York, Equilibrium Brewery, and I'm drinking their String Theory. This is the Watermelon Dragon Fruit Saison version. The String Ah. Theory is their Saison, and this is a, a version of it that they age on watermelon and dragon fruit. It is 5% ABV. Untapped has it at 3.78. The SRM chart. It is uh, here in my glass. If you're on YouTube, you can take a look. It looks like a rosé. It looks like red wine. Doesn't even fit on the SRM. looks like cranberry juice to me. Exactly. It uh, doesn't even fit on the beer SRM chart at all. It's uh, It poured with a fairly dense foamy head uh pinkish hue to it that has dissipated since not much lacing not much retention or anything just looks uh, pretty clean and still in the glass other than the uh sort of bubbles that are shooting up from the bottom from the brewery uh string theory uses a very special version of our farmhouse mixed culture white wheat and strata hops before being conditioned on watermelon and dragon fruit quote Pouring bright neon pink, this beer releases notes of bright watermelon, tropical island fruit, and a touch of pear, supported by an elegant, bready, and floral backbone. String Theory Watermelon Dragon Fruit is fruity, yet contains zero residual sur- sugars, and it is low in carbs. Healthy! Healthy! This generates a crisp, dry, and exceptional drinking experience with a beautifully balanced acidity and lingering minerality. This beer is approachable and elegant <laughs> enough for the craft cur- curious drinker and flavorful enough for the well-seasoned beer drinker looking for a lighter option. Thank God it's approachable because I was nervous in the bar. It's appro- I, want, it's I warm, wanted to approach it. It's approachable. It has a warm smile. It'll it'll it shake gives, your hand. It'll give you a firm handshake. It gives off good vibes, and that's all you really need in this It world. gives off good vibes. I put myself in the well-seasoned beer drinker camp I, of that yeah. description. I would yeah. say... If I do say so myself, that's where I fall. That sounds about right. Uh, so, yeah, it should be noted this is not a sour. This is a Saison. So Saison is a, a farmhouse style ale. It typically does have those yeasty qualities to it. It typically has some kind of spiciness to it. Might have a little tartness or acidity, but it is not uh, specifically a sour. Just saying that up front. It looks really good. It's a nice color, you know? I like when we get these fruity beers and they look like this. It's like, yeah, that's yeah. that's what we're going for. Uh, the nose, whole lot of yeast uh, and sort of spicy quality to it, some coriander, some uh, maybe a little bit of like clove almost, um, definitely some Belgian spices, what you would get off of 
similar to a blue moon, some banana, you know, stuff like that. Um, those notes are there. Lots of yeast esters, lots of wheat and hay. And the fruitiness hey. is really, hey. <laughs> and, uh, Yay! <laughs> and, and the fruitiness is uh, like a light citrus or berry. It's like some cranberry, some apple, stone fruit, a little bit of grape, um, Ooh. like red grape almost. Uh, not a whole lot of, of citrus. I mean, if there is a citrus in there, it's like lemon or maybe some some light grapefruit, but it's not very tropical smelling to me i know they did say that in their description tropical island fruit but it's it's less tropical to me it's more berries stone fruit wine oh nice okay that sounds like a good combo especially in a saison yeah it definitely smells like summer though this is definitely uh perfect for like you know Summer beach or uh, day drinking on the porch. Yeah. Field day, you know, stuff like that. Remember um, field day at school? You just, I for do. whatever reason, would just go out in the courtyard and just not have school. It was the best. Would it shock you to know that it was like kind of my nightmare? Why? It was just, it was just so athletic. Oh, God. <laughs> this is. All right. This I'm is you drink at this. beer pong in the bar all over again. <laughs> Here we go. Uh, so before Steven gets into the brewery, I just want to very quickly talk about the logo. Um, it is a circle that is like almost completed. And maybe Steven has information on this. Uh, maybe not. But I've seen this logo before. I think it's in like... Asian culture or something. It's it's this like almost completed circle and it's supposed to like mean something, but it looks really cool. It would be a dope tattoo. And um, it's just one of those insignias that you can't mistake for anything else. So I think the brewery does a good job of kind of standing out and having their own vibe their own flavor their own identity in a way so hats off to you equilibrium uh boy i wish i had information on that unfortunately i do not but it is i agree it's a dope logo it looks like somebody uh started a circle with like paint and then the paint ran out of the paintbrush ran out of paint before they completed the circle it sort of yeah off it's supposed to like mean something though yes i guess um i have no idea what it means? Uh, it's supposed to mean something, bro. But I can say that if the folks that started this brewery don't have this tattoo, missed opportunity. Yeah. Because I agree. It's dope. Yeah. Um, the beer is exactly what they described. It's perfect. It's exactly what you want if you reach for something like this. It is crisp and refreshing. The watermelon is a really nice, really thirst-quenching element that... You don't get on the nose at all because that that is so subtle. But when you drink it, it's definitely a distinct flavor that comes through. It's this like, uh, like distinctly uh, refreshing, light, juicy quality that is that is really really good. Um, the body of the thing is saison through and through. It's a little bit spicy. It's very weedy. It's light. It's uh, flavorful without being overpowering. The ABV hiding in the background. I mean, 5% barely going to, I mean, it drinks like water. It's just like a light, easy drinking day drinker. The carbonation is moderate. Find your beach. Uh, Hell it yeah. is like a nice combination of sort of grassy, spicy malts, light malts, Belgian style malts with, um, just a just a kiss of fruitiness, but it's not it's not hot bite at all. It's not overly floral, overly citrusy, overly juicy. It's not. It, it's just it leaves you mouth your mouth clean, refreshed. Uh, Capri Sun, you know. Capri so, Sun. Wow, just, haven't thought but, about one of those in a while. Uh, yeah, the brewery. Equilibrium, really cool brewery. Uh, if you want to check them out, it's eqbrew.com 
or find them on social media. Cause like I said, their social media is a little sexy and uh, the pictures are beautiful and the, like, it's just a really cool brand. It's an independently owned craft brewery. They're based in Middletown, New York. Uh, and they are, they call themselves beer balanced by science. Their vision is quote, to make the best beer in the world based on MIT trained scientific principles, a love for craft beer and a love of community. So as you might have guessed, <laughs> they went to MIT. Uh, and so they're like a little smart. And they were at MIT and they were doing a bunch of stuff that just goes over my head about taking, making water clean or something. I don't know. It was sciencey. They were like figuring out water. And then they also fell in love with craft beer and they were like, there's water in beer. Let's, let's make this marriage happen. Explosion. Ipso facto equilibrium brewery. Um, they officially became the brewery they are in 2009, purchased their first location in 2015. And in 2019, they acquired a nearby TD Ameritrade bank. Shout out, former employer, when I was younger. Hey! Yeah. <laughs> Those were the days. Those um, were the paychecks. <laughs> uh, the space looks great. It's behind me if you're watching on YouTube. It's this like giant tap room i i love it look at like that looks like that looks like a place where like you can only get in if it's invite only yeah it's it's a huge like the outside of it looks great the tanks have beautiful artwork on them and then when you go inside it's this big i mean there's like bottles lining the ceiling looks like gave in my old apartment with the b bottles everywhere uh empty bottles on top and then you've got a bar in the center with bar stools around it but seating on the outside as well and i assume there's outdoor spaces there too for the summer months um so it's a really cool space and um yeah their their website again eqbrew.com if you're interested their website will tell you all about science and how science is part of their everything they do and that's why a lot of the can art on their cans like if you can see on the string theory you've got like that um like geometry shapes, like a colorful, like waves of sound or waves of uh, light or something. Like, I don't, you know what I'm talking about here? It's like a prism almost. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and I love that it's, it's very science based because I feel like not a lot of breweries are doing that style. Um, and it makes sense that one of their, OG go-to's is the MC squared and it's got the Albert Einstein on and he's got all different colors and everyone knows that can. Yeah. At least it's, it's just a highly focused, uh, you know, a big focus of them. Um, whereas, uh, other breweries, you know, it, it might not have as much put that forward as much, but they really put it forward. Um, and their name equilibrium, it's just, you know, it's all about creating balanced beers and they're definitely, they experiment a lot. They do a lot of weird stuff. Um, you know, they have more than 600 beers in the archives uh, over the years, obviously. But um, stuff like this, which uh, first was canned this summer, um, is is an example of how they're they're taking the beer style, they're respecting it, but they're adding some adjuncts and they're making sure that they're creating a balanced beer. Because if you get a beer from Equilibrium and it's not balanced, uh, what does that say? You know? They should be nothing if not balanced. At They're that equilibrium. point, it's just brium. It's not <laughs> equilibrium. I, hold on. I, you, you know. Oh, I my don't. God. Yeah. Ew. No, it, I know. I know. Yeah. I deserve it. I, you I, do. I, I, the second I started saying it, I knew it wasn't going to come <laughs> you out. You out? Well, <laughs> you know, yeah. I was like, yeah, abort mission. But, hey, here we are. Um, they do have another really great beer that I'm looking at, Life After Death Star, which appears to be a coffee stout of some sort. I'm seeing marshmallows, I'm seeing vanilla, I'm seeing coconut in the photo. Yeah, in terms of, of what else they have on tap, I mean, um, I, I do have one of their double IP. They have, you know, all kinds of stuff. And the reason I say the can art is so sexy is like if you look at some of their their pictures, like I don't even know how they achieve this. It's probably fake, but they have these pictures of like the foam of the beer just overflowing and cascading down the side of the glass. And it just I looks think that foam gorgeous. looks a little that it looks cool, but that foam is like a little too perfect. I got to be on just the shape of it. I'm like, yeah, it doesn't but it look looks real. great. Um, but, but it they looks have, sick. Yeah, they have uh, what they call their equilibrium series, which is kind of the um, the the 
basic ones, I guess, their flagships. Uh, they have their research series, which is, they say, where they learn how beer changes in response to changes in ingredients and flora and fauna and all this stuff. And then they have an inspiration series, uh, which comes from their surroundings and experiences. And that's where you find, yeah, Life After a Death Star looks great. They have, um, they do different sours, different saisons and stuff. And their website will go on and on about the science. Um but the, and the can art is just beautiful. It's just a really cool brand. I can't say enough about it. Like, check them out. I wish we had time to do more of them. I have another. I have one of their double IPAs in my fridge right now. Very excited about it. Um, and I, I. That's what else can I say? It's a great brand. Ghost Bear Espresso Blend Imperial Coffee Stout, eleven percent. <laughs> yeah. Mobius Imperial Porter. Uh. Austin Farmhouse Ale, Farmhouse Ale Hopped with Strata, uh, IPAs, Pale Ales, Diapas, Hazies. They got something for everybody. Science. Science. So if you drink this beer, you'll be smarter. Yes. This is, if if nothing else, this is what they're drinking at MIT. So (laughs) So, if you want to hang with the smart kids, this this is where it's at. Tag me in, coach. You're up. You're up. Do it. I'm in. Let's go to Denver at Great Divide uh, Brewing Co. Great minds drink alike. They do indeed. I've got their strawberry rhubarb sour ale. It is one of their favorite year rounders. Look at that pink ass flamingo. I'm very excited about this one. I have some other beers of them as well. Uh, we were, like I said, we were trying to plan on what we wanted to do, and uh, we're getting c- close to the end of the year, so we were trying to just fit in as many brewers as we could, hence the double episode. Uh, but I've got one of their IPAs and one of their pale ales, but right now, I'm doing the strawberry rhubarb sour ale. It is 6.2%, 12 IBUs to speak of. Beer Advocate gave it an 87. Untapped gave it a 3.74. Now, on the SRM chart, On camera, it looks orange. It looks normal. In person, it's got a pink hue to it. When I first poured it, it was very pink. It was rosé. It didn't belong on the SRM beer chart. If you're looking at it on YouTube, I guess we can call it like a 7 or an 8-ish. It's looking a little kind of that darkish orange. But again, to me, up close, it's light, it's pink. And it is what it is. The note from the brewery says, Strawberry rhubarb sour ale is a gift for the senses. Strawberry is the yin to rhubarb's yang, the sweet to the tart. This beautiful partnership creates a beer that glows ruby in the glass, bursts with strawberry aroma, and bites with every sip. Bright and effervescent, this sour is a fun and refreshing lip-puckering treat. Perfect for every occasion, any time of the year. A freaking man. And if you wanted to listen to some fun music while you drink it, look no further because the brewery itself has made a Spotify playlist for this beer. It is called Strawberry Rhubarb Yacht Rock and it sets sails on the open seas of Yacht Rock's finest classics made only sweeter with a strawberry rhubarb brew a lot of Steely Dan. I'm seeing Van Morrison. I'm seeing the Doobie Brothers. I'm seeing Jackson Brown. I'm seeing Steely Dan. I'm seeing Don Henley. More Steely Dan. They really like Steely. But <laughs> I've never seen a brewery make a playlist for a beer before. I've never heard of Yacht Rock before. And that would be yacht like as in the big boat that rich people have. Um, Yacht Rock is soft rock dominating FM radio airwaves in the 70s and 80s, characterized by glossy production, breezy vocals, and bouncy rhythms. Well, you know, you learn stuff here on the hop, and that's what we're here to do. We're here to teach. We're here to we're here to spread the word. There's a master class on Yacht Rock. Okay. (laughs) With Gabe and Steve. The master class with Gabe and Steve. (laughs) Um, That's fun. I forget which brewery it is, but there's a beer called Yacht Rock, and it is quite literally insane. It's an IPA. It's delicious. But who cares? It's not mm. a great divide. Okay. 
<laughs> so uh, I am going to give this a little sniff once over. Uh, the I have it in a Tiku glass right now. The head retention is a nice, soft, and pillowy head. Uh, hung around for a while. Looks a little bit thick. Looks like a lot of fun. Here we go. Yeah, so Gabe and I are drinking beers cut from similar cloths, obviously. Um, but he's going all the way with the um, the sour nature of it. But we're both drinking beers. Ooh that you wouldn't want to drink in the dead of winter because we're feeling like celebrating summer because uh, um, cause we don't want summer to end. That's why. Because I don't like the cold uh, and we don't need to justify it any more than that. Sure, why not? Yeah. Um, but like Gabe said, we're trying to fit in as many breweries as we can before the end of the year and uh, Great Divide, we hadn't visited in a while so we figured we'd give them a shot shot see what else they can do besides that imperial porter or whatever the yeti was stout that crazy big ass thing. yeti and yeah. shit walking around like he owns the place um this smells like pie uh strawberry definitely rhubarb sweet fruit uh juicy uh in a way a little citrusy a little funky a little funky uh a little bit of coriander, maybe some weediness to it. Uh, it smells very sweet and very fun. It smells like it's going to be puckering. Um, but, I mean, it's a sour, so why wouldn't it be? Um, I think the flavors are really going to come together. Like it said, the yin to the yang. I I, I really think the flavors are going to kind of have a fun balance to each other. So, uh, with further, without any further ado, let's get into it do it um the thing about rhubarb is nobody knows what rhubarb tastes like uh that is something that you only ever see with strawberry and so i feel like it ends up but really what it is they say i've never eaten it by itself isn't Uh, it poisonous or some shit no but it's tart and so strawberries are very sweet that's what they mean by the yin to the yang strawberries are sweet rhubarb is like a tart sort of acidic is it even a fruit or is it a plant i don't know but it's it's a tart sort of acidic thing and so it's actually a little bit more on the savory side than the desserty side um but i feel like when you have it in a pie you just taste strawberries and everyone's like oh it's strawberry rhubarb but we don't know what the rhubarb part tastes like Um, rhubarb's basically a tomato (sighs) But, no, but it's, it's not. gross. But it, it play that plays well into the sour thing. That's the reason I brought it up is because the tartness of it plays well into the the nature of what you're drinking, which is a a sour. Okay, the taste is delicious. It definitely has the yin and the yang. The strawberry comes forward very nicely. It is still very sweet. I don't think the strawberry covers all of the tartness, though. I think if you are a diehard sour fan. I think you're going to really like this because it, the, the tartness is there. I would actually disagree with lip puckering. Like I didn't feel like when I hear lip puckering, I think very sour. It's not very sour. It's got a hint to it. it it'll it make you think about it. It will make you might make you a little thirsty. It'll make you go back for more. But it it is very light. It is very sweet. It is very flavorful, fruity, juiciness. Um, the carbonation is solid. The The back end is a lot of fun because it's fruity, strawberry. Strawberry flavoring is great in almost anything. Um, so it, it's got like a really nice balance to it. An equilibrium, if you will, it all connects. Hey. Um, it, there's just a lot going on, but in a very subtle way that makes you able to enjoy the beer even more. Um Sour fans, stand up, because y'all will like this. This episode is for the the fruit lovers and the sour lovers. Uh, yeah, great divide. And you have been, to you have to listen to music while you sip the beer. You have to listen to some Steely Dan. Uh, who doesn't love it? Steely it, Dan. It, this company has been around for a long time, and it's like it's kind of wild to me because it is. It is not very widely distributed. I think a lot of our listeners may not have heard of Great Divide, but they have been around since 94. I mean, yeah, they're they're almost as old as us. And they 
uh, have been around since, you know, shortly after Sierra Nevada. You know what I mean? Like they've been yeah. around a long time. Yeah. And the story is interesting. Um, first off, I, I think my fiance got me this beer. I don't, I don't think I found that. I think she got it from, she might've gone it, got it in Colorado cause she went. So hats off to sense. her. Um, it opened in 94 officially by a man named Brian Dunn. Uh, what's interesting about Brian is he spent time in the eighties building farms for developing countries. Mm. So he always had this food and beverage kind of backbone to him, fell in love with beer. He came home from that job. He started home brewing and eventually ipso facto, his brewery eventually opened with him as the sole employee. He was doing everything. He was bottling. He was packaging. He was uh, brewing, tasting, snorting. He was doing it all. God, hats off to him. Uh, <laughs> I don't know if he was snorting. Yeah. Um, maybe. Who knows? It it's 90s. Denver. Who knows? Yeah. yeah you know. It's Denver. <laughs> Where he began is now what is known as Denver's ballpark neighborhood. For those of you in or around Colorado, you know better than we do. Um, but the brewery was making and selling beer. And then in 2001, they bought their first building, which used to be an old dairy processing plant. And they kind of just skyrocketed from there. In 2013, they bought five acres in nearby Rhino neighborhood, which is the River North Art District, which sidebar oh my god gorgeous if you've ever been to denver if you ever know this area it is awesome uh they the city made a like rhino logo for this uh district neighborhood uh, it's all artsy art music whatever it's all around it's really cool gotta check it out gots to go and I believe uh, that the location behind you on YouTube, if you're watching Gabe sitting in, out, outside the brewery, I believe that is the R River North location, if I'm not mistaken. It's a giant facility. It's got a barrel bar inside it and tap room. And they were doing uh, packaging and canning there for a while. I think they've moved that elsewhere by now, but they were, um, I, I believe that's the location you're in front of. You see the sunset? It looks pretty. I love Denver. I, I love that oh, city. Oh, man. It's awesome. Denver is a lot of fun. I First time I went, I went to, me and a couple of friends went to this club that was in an abandoned church, and every room was a different type of club music. It was mm. insane. Were they playing Yacht Rock in there? Probably. <laughs> and Denver is where I went to a dispensary for the first time, and it blew my walked in, and I was like, all sketched out and trying to be cool. And they were like, hi, how can I help you? And I was like, oh my God, where are we? Yeah, I'm committing a sin. Yeah, that's essentially now what it's it normal. Um, in 2014, they expanded more. And then in 2015, uh, as Steven said, they got their space in pa their packaging facility. They got their own canning line. They've got a great mission statement. Um, I did want to very quickly talk about their foundation. I do have this beer. Should have brought it out. Didn't. Oops. Uh, they're, they have something called their Denver Pale Ale Foundation. Proceeds from this pale ale go uh, to nonprofit organizations. So far, they donated more than 500K. Amazing. Hats off to them. Uh, previously, charitable contributions were raised through this thing called their Taproom Giving Program. Uh, they are always looking to give back. They're always trying to help out the community in any way they can. We love to see it. You know, breweries really do this. They really go out of their way to, you know, not only with the environment and with initiatives, but give back. And, you know, you know, if their brewery is out there absolutely killing it, you know, maybe you can give a contribution. And it's it's really cool to see. Um, but like I said, the proceeds from the sales of the Denver Pale Ale sold in Colorado go toward uh, nonprofit organizations. They've raised a shitload of money. Um, they're just doing whatever they can to get back to their community. Uh, as I mentioned, the, the Yeti, the, the Sasquatch, if you will, is their tried and true logo. He is their guy. It is their Imperial Stout. Uh, other beers they have. I have their Titan IPA. I have the Devon Pale Ale. 
but they've got all different styles. American Lager, Hazy IPA, Hazy Pale Ale. Uh, this is this would be another good one for today's episode. They've got a Wild Raspberry Ale, which is one of their fruited ales, coming in at 4.8%, and it won a silver medal at the American Fruit Beer category at the Gab. The Gab! <laughs> Great American um, Beer. It's customable. Yeah, this is a brewery, you know, we say it a lot, but truly this is a brewery that has something for everybody. If you're into lagers, if you're into sours, if you're into uh, Saisons, Belgian style beers, IPAs, double IPAs, hazy IPAs, they have uh, some seasonal favorites they roll through, including an Oktoberfest. They got a pumpkin ale, Belgian style Trapel, English style old ale. You don't see that very often. And then the Yeti, the Imperial Stout, they've turned into a whole series of its own. Yeah, uh, they have Yeti the pump- clan. The Yeti clan. They've got the pumpkin spice, which we had on this show, round 44, gingerbread, Mexican chocolate Yeti, horchata Yeti, chocolate strawberry Yeti, barrel aged Yeti. Michael, how do we feel? <laughs> That's point. right. Uh, chocolate strawberry yeti ag- again. They have that listed there twice. Oh. What's the difference? What's the difference, folks? They're different colors. Um, but gingerbread uh, yeti. Wow. And then they also they they make their own uh, seltzer. They have their own seltzer brand called Whitewater. Great Divide Whitewater, and they do a, a craft seltzer. Um, so truly, something for everybody going on at Great Divide. Oh, they have a 2023 release calendar. That's new. I, you don't yeah. see that. Wow. I okay. I, I love it. I love it. Um, but yeah, awesome, awesome place. Um, they've got this like so the Yeti is the main logo, but they've got this like strongman archer, this this Titan. They've got this this fun artwork series that kind of covers any every sort of beer style, which is. Very fun. I uh, I like that. You know what? I like it too, and um, I think that's a great segue. I think you should talk about it more with uh, our in-house art expert. Who's Bob that? Bob Ross. <laughs> Bob Ross. Can Art and Crafts. Let's get crafty. Steven, let's see that sexy ass can again. Look at that thing. I realize sex me saying, Steven, let me see your sexy ass can sounded a different way. Do not take that out of context. Anywho, uh, Equilibrium, we've got a very maroon colored can, maroon five stand up uh, with their uh, beautiful logo. It kind of looks like you see lettering like Irish style. It's they kind of have that font going, which is a lot of fun. Um, the, the, the design, what did you call it earlier? It's like a prism. It's like a little, like, like color waves. It's like a spectrum of colors. And it's those like, almost like sound waves. It's like like floating prism. And they're all different colors and they're forming and it's expanding and it's really fun and it's really cool. And that logo, that, that circular logo is going to get you extra points. The strawberry rhubarb. We've got a fun little pink flamingo. It looks like he's standing on pink mountains or pink clouds or something, but he's standing there chilling. Great divide, big bold letters and strawberry rhubarb sour ale is right on the front. Um, What's interesting about these breweries is their artwork is, although different, very similar in a way. The logo, the circular logo for Equilibrium, the type of design artwork that Great Divide has. I kind of like the consistency. I like what's going on. I like the fact that if you have these beers next to other beers, you may not mistake them. You may be able to point it out from a crowd. I'm giving them both 9.0s. I think they're solid. I think they're great. Bob Ross is here. Bob Ross agrees. Bob Ross can't wait to stuff his face with stuffing and turkey and mashed potatoes and all that other shit that comes with it because it's so damn good. Thank you very much for joining us for another wonderful edition of Can Arts and Crafts. And we already kind of talked about what's on tap, uh, but uh, Equilibrium, Great Divide, two great breweries, 
Great Divide, second appearance on the show, Equilibrium. Uh, Welcome. Popped their hop cherry today, but uh, we, uh, we it was it was great to have them both and in, um, in this this and get as many breweries on the show as possible before the end of the year. So, uh, sour people, fruited beer people, stand up. This one was for you. We can't always be drinking the IPAs, but these breweries have stuff for you. And um, yeah, it was uh, it was a good time. Yeah, and if you're in Denver and you can make it down to the Arts District, or if you're in New York and you want to sample some science, uh, you got to go to either and or both and have yourself a time. Grab a flight, grab a drink, grab a sour, grab yourself, do what you got to do, and have one on the hop. Are we buying people beer now? I meant like... Raise one up to us, yeah. Oh, and raise one to us, yeah. That Sorry, was not. Sorry, uh, I've been there's drinking. No, there's no promo code in place. Yeah, um, not, not yet. Maybe someday. But, maybe someday. You know, we'll see. <laughs> All right, uh, let's. Um, I got a turkey to prep. I don't know about you, uh, but before we get out of here, it's time for last call. Last call. The Olympics who? Paris Olympics what? Who cares? Let's go to the Florida Man Games. And yes, this is real. You've probably heard about this already, but now it's our turn to talk about it. And and holy shit, holy shit, it's happening. Starting February 24th in St. Augustine, I think the state of Florida is having the first ever Florida Man Games. This is a wild competition sporting event that is kind of a spoof, kind of a a spinoff, if you will, of the Olympics. And it's just a bunch of Florida stereotypes doing Florida things for Florida fun. It's going to be televised somewhere online. And boy, howdy, am I excited for it. Uh, They have FEQs on there. If you want to submit to it, too late. The deadline was yesterday, November 15th, but they are picking final teams by November 30th. And one of the four questions in the FAQ says, do I have to be an athlete to compete? The answer, being athletic is not required at all. Uh, If you're athletic, they're going to push you away. They don't (laughs) want you to be athletic. They want you to be your natural Florida self and show up and just have a ball. This is uh, dive headfirst in the most insane athletic showdown on earth, forming it where the events are as unexpected as the headlines that inspired them, where the athletes are, let's just say, unconventionally talented. Think you've seen wild? Think again. From wrestling in the mud to running from actual sheriff's deputies, the Florida Man Games is where the bizarre meets brawn and sanity is optional. I'm interested. I'm interested. It's been... It's been a while since we uh, talked sports here on the hop. Yeah. And first off, the logo. We've got this bearded man with a headband with a beer in his hand, and he's got an alligator just wrapped around him on brand, if you will. Yeah. And some of the games we're talking about here, we've got a weaponized pool noodle duel. Test your strength inside the Florida Man Games Coliseum, which is a massive above ground pool. That looks like if Hercules ate a bunch of stuff, he looks he's like jacked, but he's also fat. That's terrifying. Yeah, the the website, go to the Florida Man Games dot com and take a look. Category five cash grab. Subject yourself to category (laughs) five wins as you scramble to catch as much real cash as you can. I would do that. It's real cash. I feel category (laughs) five. (laughs) They're just embracing it. Like Florida's like, yeah, we get devastated by hurricanes on a regular basis. They're just embracing it. They're like, we're just going to we're going to make it a sport. Evading arrest obstacle course. Jump over fences through backyards and away from actual police officers to earn your freedom. Yes. Okay. It that one makes me I that's a little cringy to me. <laughs> a, a catalytic converter, two bikes, and a handful of copper pipes race against time. Compete head to head in a race that lets you live a day in the life of a Florida man headline. I don't know what that even means. The, the picture is a guy driving what appears to be 
a, a dirt bike loaded up with copper pipes or something. I don't even know what's happening here. Oh, that, here that this, was, this one's for us. Yeah. Be- <laughs> beer belly Florida sumo. Yes. Dive into the beer belly of the beast as you try to blast your opponent out of the ring. It looks, Stephen, they got a picture of us. Aw. <laughs> yeah, that, that one sounds fun. And uh, another cool thing, it's being judged by former American Gladiators Dan Nitro Clark and Lori Ice Fetrick. Original Gladiators. Oh. And there's just a picture of them on the website with a, a poster in the background that just appears to say the word whatever over and over and over and over again. <laughs> whatever, 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 whatever. Um, there's a mullet contest, because why not? Oh, of course there's a mullet contest. There's a Florida man pinup. Showing off the wild and wonderful women of Florida. Oh, that that could be dangerous. There There's could, they a could, chicken they could ri- coop bingo. Two oh, chickens yeah. will decide whether you win or lose in this fun, dirty game inspired by our Floridian family in places like Deland or Interlochen, where they literally do this for fun because they don't know that cell phones exist yet. This one made me laugh. Chicken coop bingo. That sounds like a good time. For who? <laughs> For us. No one else. Just you and me. I don't chicken. Uh, so they've all oh, birds. Um, <laughs> they've got nine one one fight night brawl of the badges. And yes, it is exactly what it sounds like. Uh, watch officers take on firefighters in the brawl of the badges. Main event comes to a close. The epic showdown promises to be intense as these heroes clash in battle to prove who's the toughest behind the badge. They have a barbecue wow. competition. That's fun. They have cultural demonstrations. Not sure I need to see cultural demonstrations out of Florida. What is the culture yeah. there? I don't know. And they have, they're promoting this, selfies with alligators. Another one bites the dust. Yeah. Darwin, how do we feel about that? Darwin, uh, baby, Darwin. That's, yeah. Yeah. Um, it's presented sure. by it's presented appropriately by Ripley's believe believe it or not, and um, it's. <laughs> I mean, look. If I could go, I would go. I'll just say that. I mean, I this I really is... want to watch this online. I think we should. I think there's got to be a link. So I think there is a link somewhere. Uh, we might need a ticket, but I don't know. This sounds like a good time. Um, the selfies with alligators thing. It says the insurance company doesn't love this, but we don't care. Like, ain't hey, yeah, yeah, we know you don't care. This has you live Florida in Florida, written, we get it. Yeah, this has Florida written all over it. And I got to be honest, I'm here for it. I can't believe this is real. Yeah, I'm. Uh, yeah. This would I, only you know, happen in Florida, though. Like, exactly. You're, you're not going to see like the Connecticut man games. It's going to be a bunch of old white people trying to out chess each other. Oh, God. Um. Yeah, this is <laughs> this is crazy. But I mean, yeah, if I could watch it online, I would. And generally speaking, like we've talked about this with the Olympics, we're sports people. If there's a competition, like honestly, if I can find investment in it, I'll be on board. Yeah. I mean, shit. Um, good for you, Florida men. Uh, and and I guess I'm assuming you don't have to be a man to participate in this, right? I'm assuming it's. I don't think so. No. Open. Okay. Well, they have the, Florida. the the pinup competition, so women are definitely involved. Probably not in the. Yeah, I, I, whatever. The sumo wrestling, yeah. Um, yeah, well, I you don't never know. Women, women sumo, right? I do not know the answer to that, and I, I do not want to speculate about it. it. Neither do I. Neither do I. But uh, if well, you're in Florida on, what is it, February 24th? Something like uh, that, yeah. Watch out. Watch out. I hope watch no out. one, like, dies. That would suck. Well, if if they die doing those alligator selfies, again, Darwin? How do we feel about that? Yeah, that's kind of on them. But All right. what are you, you going to do? We have to go equilibrium, great divide, Florida man competition. <laughs> Thank you, everybody, for your participation in this pre-Thanksgiving episode of The Hop. And listen, seriously, um, with Thanksgiving around the corner, we give our thanks to you for uh, listening to us on a weekly basis it means the world to us and we are thankful for this podcast and what it has meant to us over the past four years so uh reflecting on that a little bit as we head into the holiday my favorite holiday so however you celebrate i hope that there is a beer in your hand 
some mashed potatoes in your reach and that your fantasy football team succeeds. Yes, we have loved doing this. We have loved you joining us. Keep joining us. Drink good beer. Say something nice. Peace out, fam. Cheers. Cheers.